This is Khalil Roundtree Saturday night after his win over Carl Roberson. Hey, Khalil. <clears throat> Alex, what's up? Um, I just have one, one, one question for you, man. Um, for the next Khalil that's maybe sitting on his couch right now, a little bit overweight, um, what's your message to them? Hmm. It might sound a bit cliche, or we've heard this before, but like your life matters. <sighs> Your life matters. You can be special. You can be strong. You can be seen. You can be heard. Life is beautiful. If you make it that way, it doesn't have to be how everybody else makes it seem. Stick around. <laughs> Stick around another day. I would have a lot of a lot of things like that to say, man. Thank you. Absolutely. Incredible stuff there. Uh, we have talked to Khalil a few times on this show, the ESPN show. Just one of the, I mean, I can't claim that I know him personally. We are not friends, so to speak, but just seems like truly one of the uh, most special people in this sport. Um, the way he expresses himself, what he represents, uh, his story, the inspiration that he is. Uh, he is the best that MMA has to offer. Damn good fighter too. But when you have a man like that, expressing himself like that, how could you not root for him? How could you not call him an inspiration? How could you not want to talk to him? And so it is a great honor to have Khalil Roundtree on the program after his big win on Saturday. Let's go to the Zoom machine and say hello to the man who was victorious this past Saturday. Khalil, my man, how are you? I'm doing well, Ariel. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me on today. Oh, it is. Uh, I'm so I'm, I'm probably most excited to talk to you today just because of everything that, uh, you have said over the past week what you represent. First off, congratulations on the win. Incredible stuff. Um, I'm curious, what has the last, you know, 36 or so hours been like for you? Because it seems like, you know, the the fight itself could have gone everywhere and you could have gotten mad props. Right? Connor's tweeting about you, giving you props. But it seems like, you know, everyone's talking about what you said afterwards. Has it been overwhelming to see the love that you have received? Uh... Overwhelming, yes. Um, in a really good way. I've I don't think I've ever received this much feedback um post fight and let alone like this much just positive feedback. Um, you know, just just endless messages still just flowing in of of people just expressing gratitude and just so, so many things, man. It's like, I, I haven't really been able to sleep much just because I've been thinking about the, like what, what could possibly come from all of this and like the, the type of change that can really be made, um, you know, on a, on a very big scale. So yeah, it's, it's been great though. It's, it's, it's been really great. Did you, I was wondering, I asked, actually asked a friend of mine, um, if, if I was blocked on your Instagram, because I saw people uh, tagging you and the Instagram wasn't there for me. Did you disable your Instagram? Because I was like, oh man, I hope I'm not blocked. But I, I kept seeing people tag you and it was leading to nothing. Yeah, so I I think ne like currently I only allowed tags from people who I follow. And also there was a point within my career, maybe like a year and a half ago or something like that, where I just blocked as many MMA media outlets as I could. Oh, okay. So I am blocked. 
Maybe, maybe you are. Damn. <laughs> um, and it's, it was, I think just to speak on that a little bit, sure. um, you know, just being, you know, yes, I'm, I'm a UFC fighter and an, and an athlete, but just being tagged in MMA media that I just don't want to hear about or don't care about, or even just like using my phone and just going to my explore page and just seeing other fighters be talked about a certain way, or, you know, just I just, I'm, I haven't been, you know, a, a big fan of MMA media for a really, really long time. And um, I just had gotten to this point emotionally where I just really didn't want to be associated with a lot of it. Um, just due to a lot of frustration, I didn't really know how to handle it, but to block it out. You know, most people say, oh, you got to block it out. But I yeah. like physically blocked it, <laughs> blocked it all out. So Consi I'll definitely... No, no, please do whatever works for you. Considering that, I'm I'm actually super uh, happy that you came on the show because I, you know, wouldn't have been surprised had I known that that you'd have just told me to like take a hike. So thank you again for coming on. Uh, could I ask, like, what about all of that bothered you? Why did you want to block it out? Why did you feel like you needed to block that out? Um, I think it it has a good like a a good amount to do with you know, my post fight speech and just how I said, like, you know, I just, I've, I'm, I'm at a point now where I just feel like I I'm ready to open up about just who I am and what I've gone through for, for the other, for other people, because, you know, maybe there's other people that, you know, that my story and stuff can inspire, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, I, I felt like any time I would fight and win, then that's when people want to speak to me. And that's when people want to ask me questions. And still, the like, you know, MMA media would want to ask me questions, but still it was questions along the lines of like, well, who do you want to fight next or right. this? And I'm like, all of that stuff is cool, but like for me personally and how I even got into MMA, it's so far off from, you know, so far off from like my real mission, you know? And, and a lot of the conversations are about like, Oh, you know, who do you want to fight next or champion? Or do you see yourself at top 10 and who's the best striker and this and that. And, and to me, a lot of that stuff really doesn't matter. It's not like in my brain on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think um, I think just with time and and life and maturity, I have finally come to a point where I realize like, hey, I, I have to take control over the things that I want to speak about and the things that I want to do, whether I'm winning or losing, whether I'm a champion or not. Um, I just want to take the opportunity to be able to, um, you know, expand my outreach as much as I can um, before it's all over, you know, before all the fighting stuff is over. I appreciate you saying that because uh, I was watching your pre-fight press conference on Wednesday and I couldn't tell if you were annoyed at the questions or in a bad mood or something like that, but it definitely felt like you didn't, I don't know, like you didn't want to talk about that. You, you know what I'm saying? Is that an accurate portrayal? Like I felt like you, uh, like you were taking like, a, I think I've, uh, you know, been doing this long enough to where I feel like I could read someone if they want to talk or don't want to talk. And then you were like pausing and thinking and it felt like you wanted to say something else, but you were just kind of, what, what is that pretty much why? Because it was the wrong questions being asked of you? In a way, I, I'm, I'm doing my best to try to develop into the best, you know, UFC fighter and MMA athlete I can be. And I know that one of those things right now is, you know, I, I've got to be able to promote a fight, right? And, and that's just something for me that, in my entire life, I had never been good at doing. I didn't really get into my first like one-on-one -on -one fist fight until I stepped into a cage. Everything else was kind of, you know, like just kind of small, mediocre, like street brawls or stuff at, you know, hardcore shows or things like that. But um, I'd never really been a person that was out, you know, happy to fight. If I ever had to fight someone, it was always like, oh, I don't want to do this, you know? So, I'm, I'm getting better at embracing the part that I, I realize that I have to promote fights moving forward. But the truth and honesty to who I am is 
I really don't like pre-fight interviews. I don't like to say, oh, this is what I see in this guy and I'm going to do this and that and, and really kind of like dish out my entire game plan and focus before the fight even happens because I also want to be able to maintain my integrity, right? So I don't want to go into a pre-fight interview talking about all of the things that I'm going to do and how confident I am and then go get smashed and then not get a chance to get a post-fight interview to talk about what I learned, <laughs> you know what I mean? And and so like, it's, it's just really being able to, um, yes, I was uncomfortable. And a lot of the times for pre-fight interviews, I am uncomfortable because I don't want to talk about the fight. It's already going to happen. And I just want to do what I plan to do and um and just keep moving forward post-fight interviews are great i'm willing to share everything that i learned or that i went through or that i prepared for um but yeah just the the pre-fight interviews to me they just they they kind of bug me more than they than they hype me up if someone were to ask you who is khalil roundtree jr what's your response hmm Cole Roundtree Jr. Wow. <laughs> um, I'd say I'm a free, honest, authentic leader. <laughs> That's, you know, at the end of the day, those are the three things that I, that I stay true to is just maintaining my freedom, freedom of expression, freedom of individuality, uh, freedom of thought, uh, approach in life. Uh, I do everything that I can to be as honest as I can with, you know, with my words, with my actions. And I really try to remain authentic as much as I can too, and, and really not change up who I am, where I come from, um, the things that I'm interested in, uh, how I dress, what music I listen to. So, and leader, as far as just wanting to really help, you know, help people um, or just continue to like, just be an inspiration or lead by example. You know, I, I don't have anything figured out. I can't tell people exactly what to do, but I, I do want to make sure that, you know, my actions and how I, how I live this life um, are, are, you know, I, I live by example and, and hopefully give someone a, um, some type of, you know, vision of, of what could be for them. Have you always been this way? Um, I can't say that I've always been this way. Um, but my father who I always honor, especially in this, in this fighting stuff, um, uh, he, all of the stories that I heard of him were nothing but great as far as, how many people he helped and someone's like, Oh, you know, your dad helped me get this job or your dad, you know, took me how taught me how to, you know, get my first suit and your dad did this and that. And so like my father was someone who was for his people so much so that like when he passed away, they renamed the street that he grew up on after him. And there was like a huge, you know, ceremony and motorcade and, and things like that. So to be a child and to know that, you know, to find out that my father was murdered and kind of taken from us um, was, was really heavy. And my thing was always to just try to make him proud and live a life to where he would be proud of me and, and, and the things that I do, because, you know, I, th I feel like a lot of fathers that have sons would love for their sons to be, you know, an elevated version of them. And so I, I really tried to consciously live that. Where is that street? Uh, it's in New Jersey. I don't know if they still have, I don't know if it's still named after him, but I do have, um, I do have photographs um, from the day that he passed away and the day that they changed the sign. Wow. Um, and I do have the sign still as well. Wow. Um, be in New Jersey. We, we've talked in the past about your father and your story is so incredible. You know, the sport is growing so much. I'm, I'm assuming there are some people who don't even know about who your father was and, and what happened to him. Um, is it important for you to keep reminding people? By the way, have they, have they, did they ever find who, who killed your father? Was that person ever captured? 
a, they found them like immediately. Uh, but there was a, a bit of controversy because um, just with, with the trial and things like that, but they did find the guys. And um, I think they didn't do more than, you know, five or six years in prison for it. Wow. And like, if they're still out there now, I mean, they're, you know, if they're still alive, that they're, they're out there and they're free somewhere. Um, and so, you know, another part of my motivation, knowing that they could potentially still be alive there is like, <laughs> you didn't like, you know, you might've taken him, but you didn't, you didn't kill the name and you didn't kill what we're about and the mission that we've been on, you know, since, since he started. And yeah. How, how different of a person do you think you would be if that didn't happen? I'm assuming you've thought of this. Um, this completely changes the way you are, the way you think, the way you try to change and evolve as a human being. How different do you think you would be? Do you think you wouldn't even be a fighter if, if that never happened? I highly doubt that I would have been a fighter. Um, my thing growing up, when I would wake up, we had uh we had like platinum and gold records in the uh in the house that were given and dedicated to my dad before he even passed so like boys to men you know motown philly triple platinum you know things and it had my dad's name on it and you know i would walk down the hallways and look at it and and always think you know i'm going to be in the music industry that's how i'm going to you know follow in my dad's footsteps and so uh, when I was probably eight years old, seven years old is when I started asking my mom for instruments. And every Christmas I would say, like, I want a drum set this Christmas. I just want a guitar this Christmas. I just want a keyboard. And I would teach myself, I would lock myself in my room and teach myself how to play, you know, my favorite songs. And so my dream was always to be a musician. And so I think if my father were still around, um, that that probably would have been more of my uh, more of the route that I would have taken, like music producer or A and R or something that has to do with uh, working with with the entertainment business. Because still to this day, um, I'm completely I love it. I love the entertainment industry. I love the music industry. Um, yeah, so it probably would have been something around there, which is something that I'm still I would still love to do. You know, on while while I fight or post fighting. Um, yeah. Is is your mother alive and well? Yeah, my mother is alive. Um, um she's she's well, but I'm I feel like, you know, I'm 32 now. My mom I think is 60. Um and I'm just I'm at that point in life right now where, you know, um like father time starting to kick in, right? So my mother's health is is it's not the best right now and that was a, a big motivation uh, for this fight too, is just, I have to see my mother in constant pain every day. And um, I still I still support my mother because she supported my entire family by herself um, for this long, working multiple jobs to, to raise four children and, uh, and just keep us alive. So now is, is my time where um, I feel like it's just time to take the reins and, and kind of help her out so that she can live out the rest of her life happily. So um, my mother is alive and she is, she is well, but her health is not the best right now. And so that's a big part of my focus right now too, is how can I, uh, you know, help restore my mother's health so that I can keep her around for as long as possible. Just curious, have you heard from her since your fight? And if so, how does she react? You know, I think uh, parents, uh, I could say we, I'm a, I'm a parent as well. Like you, you never want to see your kid emotional. You never want to see them hurting, crying, even though you may not be hurting. But like, you know, the, you, you are not afraid to share your emotions. Um, does she comment on that? And if so, what does she say? Uh, I had a talk with my mom uh, a couple, like a few days ago. And prior to this fight, my mom did not like to watch me fight. She would never watch live. She'd been to one fight, um, the Ultimate Fighter finale, when when I fought Andrew Sanchez, and she was there. And that's when I don't know if you've seen the clip, but I was like screaming at her, like "Mom, shut up!" because she was she was hysterically crying and like, "Oh, please get up, no," you know. And I could see her because she was for some some reason she was front row, like right by where the the inspectors like 
grease us down. So she, um, she supports that I fight and she supports, you know, the, the change that, that it's brought to my life. But she was never someone who would watch it live. But I talked to her a few, a few days before the fight. And she had said to me with full confidence, she's like, I have, I'm so confident in you for this one. I've never seen you be so focused and I've never seen you lock in so much. And she's like, for the first time in my life, like I'm going to watch your fight live and I'll be right there supporting. And it brought me to tears because like, that's just, that's just huge for someone like my mom. So, um, yeah, I, I have a fantastic relationship with her. She's the strongest, most compassionate woman I know. And she's, you know, she'll be on her way over here shortly to, to hang out and just kind of give me her thoughts. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about everything that's happening. But, um, like I, I said on Instagram, you know, this, this fight and was, was definitely dedicated to the both of my parents for, just everything that they did and the foundation that they set to, to make me who I am. And I feel, I felt like it was time for me to embrace everything that they've seen in me and that I maybe didn't see in myself. And it was just time to just embrace it and trust it and, and put it all to work. And that was the result that we had gotten. You have mentioned, and you mentioned uh, in, in the post fight press conference as well, not that long ago, you were 300 pounds, uh, you were smoking, you were not eating well, obviously, you were addicted to all kinds of vices. How long ago was that? Uh, so that was 12 years ago. So at the, I'd say at the height of my just depression and like downward spiral, I was 19. That was like, I was out of high school. Um, I knew that I wasn't going to go, go to college because I just, my whole life, I never really, I had friends. And I had really good friends, but it wasn't like school wasn't ever really like a thing where I went and felt like, oh, this is, you know, my all, everyone's here. It's going to be good. You know, most of my friends, we didn't really like school. We skateboarded and like, you know, listened to punk rock and, you know, used to ask people outside the store to like buy cigarettes for us and you know, like that type of stuff. Um, but uh, about 19 is when just everything kind of hit me. People were going to college. Some people were getting jobs. And, you know, I was living in a one bedroom apartment with my mom, my brother, my niece, my sister, uh, struggling to make $750 rent meet every month. And I had no idea of what I wanted to be in life or what I wanted to do or what I could even do. Because at the time, 19 years old, 305 pounds, two packs of cigarettes a day, soda only, you know, you know, if someone had pills, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll take some dot, not even knowing what they are, you know, just, just really just lost and with no hope or no, no, you know, I never didn't even care. I, like, I don't care if I wake up today. I don't, you know, I'm going to drink myself and hope that I don't wake up tomorrow, you know, like, like those type of thoughts until, um, you know, I, my brother was watching MMA. I saw a little bit about what that was and kind of a, a, attached to this, this aggression and, and kind of anger that it seemed like these guys had, especially after seeing Rampage rip down a door on the ultimate fighter. I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to do. You know, I was like, yeah, I want to do that. You mean if I do train MMA, I can just break a door down with my bare hands. Absolutely. So, um, it was just, it was a mixture of like, you know, being exposed to MMA and then just feeling like I just wanted to just like explode or give up. And yeah, that was, that was at 19. And that's when, that's when I just decided I'm, I'm going to start. One of the things that you said in that clip that I think resonated with a lot of people is, you know, you matter, you know, keep living, it will get better, all that. Did you not feel like you mattered? Did you not feel like it was going to get better? No, I... I think a, a big portion of that was um, when when I was I was born in Los Angeles and 
when I was five, we moved to Las Vegas and my mom used everything that she could to move us to, you know, kind of the best neighborhood, you know, with, with, with better schools and it was kind of a sub, suburb area. And, um, I was new and in school, I, I was always, a, like I said, a music guy. Um, I remember one of the days of school, like I wore an InSync t-shirt and like no guys ever wore InSync, InSync t-shirts, you know, no black kids either. So um, I remember like I had gotten made fun of for it pretty heavily, even like just walking home from school. I remember just like a crowd of kids just kind of like following me, kind of laughing at me. And then uh, that's kind of like when a lot of my like self-loathing <laughs> kind of started to kick in, you know, and um, just a, a mixture of who I always wanted to be in life, you know, this kind, kind of like happy guy, smiley, just want to be friends with everybody. Uh, I never, like, I, I didn't really feel like that was accepted. And I felt like I was always supposed to be this, like, because I was bigger, this like bully or, you know, just this guy who I really wasn't, I was always expected to be something different or an athlete. So, uh, I just, I just kind of lived my life feeling overlooked or like people really never saw me for who I am or who I wanted to be. And it was always like these labels that were kind of placed on me. And, um, yeah, I think, it, I think that was just a, a lot of it is just really feeling unseen, even though I had people who loved me and people who championed me, uh, there was always that portion of, of me inside that just felt like, unseen like it didn't really matter because no one really cared to know who I am internally or nobody really cared about the the soft and sweet things that that I cared about at the time you know yeah um and so like the the process you know you, like you talk about it but people don't realize just how tough you know being 300 pounds and not being an athlete at the time I would imagine that first step just to go to the gym and you're self-conscious, right? You you probably are thinking like, God, you know, people are going to look at me, laugh at me, judge me. That first step it might be the most difficult step of them all, I would imagine. Do you recall that first day in the gym, those first couple times in the gym and how you felt sort of, you know, I would imagine out of shape, you, you don't have good cardio, things like that. How difficult was that? And how did you keep going? Like feeling down, what made, because I could imagine a lot of people do it once, twice, and then quit because they don't think they're good enough to keep going. How did you keep going? Um, yeah, I remember, I remember walking in. So we, we did a, a quick search to see what gyms were in town. And, um, we saw that Vanderlei Silva's gym was here and that was like, right when he had built it. And so, um, my brother and I, we looked up Vanderlei Silva online and we saw his videos and I'm like, this guy <laughs> is sick, you yeah. know, like, you know, this guy is crazy. Yeah. Let's go to his gym. If he's going to teach us like how to fight like that, let's go. And so, um, when, uh, when we walked in, I just remember feeling this immediate like intimidation because there's photos of him. He's like rah, yeah. screaming pictures of him, like covered in blood and ax, uh, you know, shout out to Eric Williams for those photos. Now that I know who took them. Um, so, yeah, I remember being very, very uh, in intimidated. And then the first class was a, a Muay Thai class that was led by um, an instructor named Michael Costa. And he is the one of the hardest trainers that I've ever known in my life. But the cool thing about it is that he definitely taught from the heart and he cared about every single last one of his students. And so I went and I made sure that I just gave my best efforts and listened to what he was saying because I knew that I wanted to learn how to fight like Vanderlei Silva. And uh, I remember after the class, I was just completely gassed out. And he came up to me and he's like, hey, have you done this before? And I said, no, never. This is my first time. And he's like, I think you're I think you have, you know, like a, a natural ability and natural talent. He's like, you should you should come again. Our next class is mm. tomorrow at, you know, 11 o'clock. Um, come back. I want to see you in my class. And that was the first time that I felt like I had had this like open door acceptance, like from, from a kind person who actually wanted to, to teach me how to fight. And I think what kept, what kept me going there was just 
you know, this guy really wanted to teach me how to fight and really to, to make me help me be a better person. And I remember that was the day that I got home and I threw out my packs of cigarettes and, you know, just, I was like, if I, I can't smoke, if I'm going to be doing this, cause it's just, it's so much on my lungs and I can't breathe. And, um, that was, that was just the start of it. And then everything else, I just started to add a little bit more every, every day. To the best of your knowledge, um, recollection, how long does it take for the weight to come off, the confidence to grow, the feeling of acceptance to become really real? Like, what's that process? How long does that take? Months? Years? For me personally, I lost 100 pounds in 11 months. Wow. And from that, from the first time that I did MMA or did, did that Muay Thai class, um, every day was like I would get rid of something something that I knew wasn't good for me. First day was cigarettes. The next day it was, you know, soda. And then I was like, okay, I'm not eating fast food anymore. I'm going to just eat like vegetables and eggs and protein. And then I started feeling better already from just eliminating those things. Then I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to start jogging a little bit. And then I started jogging. So I think the confidence started to come after about like, like three months, I could say, you know, like three months of, of just going to training and just telling myself that, you know, today is the day, like, or today I'm not going to smoke. That, that was the thing. Those vices were all obviously wanting to like creep back in, but I had to take it day by day and just say, you know what, today I'm not going to do it. And I wake up the next day today, I'm not going to do it. And, and the same thing with training today, I'm going to go today. I'm going to go and just taking everything day by day until yeah, about three months down the line, I saw my face slimming up a bit and I was like, Oh my God. And people were finally saying like, are you working out? Or, you know, like I started to get a little bit of, of, uh, you know, acknowledgement for, you know, for losing weight and stuff. And that just took it through the roof. And then I told my coach, I want to fight. And he's like, okay, you have to lose a hundred pounds. And I'm like, ah, how do I do that? <laughs> I just elevated everything that I was doing. So I just started running more. Um, I actually turned off my cell phone. I, I just told my friends, Hey, I won't have a phone for the next couple of months, shut it off. Wow. And I just did my life to, um, to losing the weight and, and to working out and to really just trying to create this better version of myself. Have you ever talked to a therapist? Um, yeah, I, I've, I've talked to, um, I've talked to a few people who are therapists and I've spoken to, yeah, I, I have, um, not regularly, but it is something that I would, I would love to do, um, you know, moving forward, but I just, I haven't been able to really like afford it with all of the other things that I have going on, you know? I was just curious because you, you talked about depression and things like that. I talked to one uh, and I only started yep. uh, a year ago and it helped me tremendously in a tough time. For therapy, man. <laughs> My girlfriend, uh, I think, you know, Mia, yep, yep. she's her and I together, but her, I, I'm going to take myself out of it. Um, yeah. She opened my mind up to so many things and just, even just being able to, you know, be open and speak about mental health. I am a huge advocate for therapy for men getting therapy for women getting to anybody. I, th I think that it's a fantastic thing. I think we all need a space to, to talk. <laughs> Do you consider yourself a confident person? Um, you know, I can say yes, right? Like I can say yes. There are times that I do feel confident, but I think that, I'm more of the guy who is working on building confidence rather than confidence being right at the forefront. I'm more of the guy who I'm a bit more like reserved and hesitant and it takes a little bit of encouragement for me to actually step into my confidence. One thing you said uh, on Saturday, another thing that you said was uh, that you want to inspire change. Uh, you want to be heard, you want to be seen, you want to inspire change. How do you want to inspire change and, and what do you want to change? So for the past, you know, I also mentioned something about like my story, right? Yeah, yeah. And my story, my personal story, yes, I would love to continue to share. But 
for the past couple of years, I've been writing a story. Um, L- like literally writing it? Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's, it, it has a lot to do with my own personal story. But Ariel, you, you have children? Yes, three. Boy, boys, uh, girls? Two boys and a girl. Uh, your boys, do they like, uh, who would you say are like, their three favorite superheroes. Oh my, uh, you know, like the classics, uh, they like, uh, Iron Man, Spider-Man. Um, and there's a bunch of, uh, like new dudes now that I don't like, they watch Avatar. I don't know anything about this stuff. Now everyone's going to make fun of me, but you know, stuff like that. It's okay. I asked you that because when I was a young boy, I had no superhero that I could look up to and say, Hey, that guy looks like me. Mm. I want to be Halloween or I want to, you know, yeah. I want to, you know, I didn't have that. And so I knew that I never wanted to be an athlete really growing up. Like I never, I didn't think like, oh, I want to be a football player. I want to be a basketball player because everybody that looked like me that were kind of considered superheroes like Michael Jordan and Shaquille O'Neal, they played basketball, didn't want to play that. Um, and so the story that I've been working on is, is a, a, a character version of myself, but like, it's not really me, but it's something that resembles me, but with, with like a similar story. So things that I've been through, I've characterized them thoughts and, and personal, let's say like demons for lack of better words. Um, I've characterized them into like villains where this character fights these things and it's a very like internal. So it's more of like a comic graphic novel type of story to where there's room for my imagination to also go into it and 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 um, and kind of tell the stories from how I see them, because I'm a very like internal, more visual guy. So, yeah, I've been working on more of like a gra- graphic novel type of story that I think will inspire change in a lot of people and a lot of men that look like me and a lot of children that look like me who kind of need something like that. And I think that with, you know, with the right people that have a similar mindset and a similar, you know, that connect to it, I think that something like this could, could be a huge change, a huge change. Have you shown it to people yet or you're not quite there yet? I've written, I've, I've put together pitch deck and um, I, with the help of, you know, my, my management, my agency, um, we've pitched it. But I think when I pitched it, it was a bit premature. And so now I'm at a point right now where I know that I'm no writer. Um, the writing is not bad and the, you know, the, the, the pitch deck and stuff is not bad, but I do know that like with people who would love to be a part of a project like this, it could be huge. (laughs) It could be huge, man, because I, it's something that I'm like, I'm definitely passionate about. And, um, I would love to be able to, yeah, like I said, tell my story in a more dramatic, uh, visual type of way that, that multiple people can, can connect to. And, um, yeah, I would, we'll have to connect, you know, personally to, so I can give you more details, but, um, yeah, I, I definitely want to be able to, to make a change in, in, in that type of way as well. Uh, in the post-fight interview with Paul Felder, you were emotional. Um, in the post-fight press conference, you were emotional. I like this. I'm an emotional guy. People make fun of me that I've cried on the air and whatnot. I don't mind. I've always been that kind of guy. Uh, so this draws me to people like you. Are you always like that? Or is it the fight that brings these, these emotions out in you? And then it kind of subsides a few days later. I think I'm, I'm, I've always been like an empathetic type of guy, right? Like I, I'm always aware of other people's feelings and the people around me. And I pick up the, like the energy of the room. Right. And uh, I think it's more of just the fight that brings out that, like that burst of, you know, like just tears, just thinking about everything that I had gone through in camp and just, you know, doubts and struggles and having to wake up and do this. And I think it was just, it all just built up to where I just, I don't mind letting it out either. If it, if that's what wants to come out, that's what comes out. I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold it back just because someone else's opinion. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I'd say I'm pretty emotional. I'm a sensitive guy. 
Um, and, uh, you know, but yeah, I don't think it's not that I like cry a lot, but if it, if it means a lot, then yeah, the like, you know, tears and stuff will, will definitely come out and I'm not afraid of that. How do, how do you just curious and I'll, just a couple more questions and I'll let you go. Thank you for the time. How do you get over like the ups and downs? How do you get over the downs? Um, the, 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 the bad days, what do you do to get over those days to get you to go get out of bed, go train, go fight? What is your method to getting over those bad days? Well, the first thing is vision, right? I, 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 I do my best to keep the vision alive and I try to think and see why am I doing all of this? What is it for? You know what I mean? So the vision ahead, what does the life that I dream of look like and what type of person is that? And how do I look and what's, am I smiling? You know, so it's, it's vision. But I think recently, one of the things that helps me the most, and it's something that my coach, um, my coach Lorenzo tells me, and it, it, it helps me and strengthens me. It's, he says, stop feeling sorry for yourself. And I think that that's something that some people could take the wrong way, but for me, it actually helps. You know, if I, if, if, if I know that I have three training sessions in a day and my body is, you know, sore and I don't have motivation and I tell myself like, stop feeling sorry for yourself, just go do it. Then, <laughs> then, you know, if I attack the day, no matter how I'm feeling, without feeling sorry for myself or giving myself excuses, then at the end of the day, I feel so much better because I still went, I, you know, like I defeated all of those things, like all the odds that were stacked against me, you know, in a way like sore body, you know, this person called me, they're sick, you know, this bill, that, and da, 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 and I still went and got all of my stuff done at a hundred percent effort. When I go to bed at night, I'm like, hell yeah. Mm. And then the next day, Maybe I feel better. Maybe the motivation is there. But on the on the hard days, on the down days, I tell myself, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Work, work hard. <laughs> work hard. You know, keep going. Work hard. That's it. Every day. We just work hard. Every day. Work hard. Uh, you're on a roll now. You've looked fantastic in your last two fights. I did read recently, though, that when you were living in Thailand, and correct me if I misinterpreted this like you were starting to lose that passion for being a fighter like you're almost too comfortable there it was too i mean it's paradise there but you were you were losing that why were you losing it and if you didn't leave thailand do you think that this version of you doesn't come out in the cage do you never get it back uh so i don't want to say that i was too comfortable i was very comfortable there um but it was more about my surroundings and and just seeing people you know selling you know 50 cent cups of coffee every single day on the street just happy to the core and seeing kids outside you know just like playing you know football in the streets or just running around and no shoes no care in the world but everybody majority of people that i saw just always maintain this smile and this grace and just this like, just happy to be alive, happy to be around their, just their fellow people. It was very like tribal being in Thailand. And so I started to, you know, question myself in a way of like, why am I striving for so many, like just extreme things? Why do I want a big house and $50 million and, and, you know, and, and all of these things when I could literally just have happiness with people that I love around me, especially in Thailand, I thought I was going to live there for the rest of my life. And I loved it. I loved everything about the culture and the people. So I had just gotten to a point where I was like, you know, with what I have now, I could do something smaller, even if I just worked in a coffee shop or I did this or I drove a tuk-tuk and just drove people from, you know, place to place, I could still be so happy. Like I don't need a, a bunch of things to, you know, to get this happiness that I think that I'm 
working for. So it was more along the end. I was like, you know, if I don't fight in the, if I don't fight in the UFC, then that also frees me up to be able to, to fight Muay Thai. And that's, that was like my dream It's like, I, I had the opportunity to fight in Roger Domnern stadium for, you know, you know, if, if I wanted to, I had the connections, you know, and I thought like, man, you know, owning a green WBC Muay Thai belt would be amazing. And there were still dreams of like, yeah, I still want to fight, but I want to fight Muay Thai, but I can't fight Muay Thai if I'm in the UFC and Muay Thai, if I fought Muay Thai, that'd make me happy. You know, there's just a lot of just conflicting, <laughs> conflicting thoughts and, and things until, you know, having so much downtime during COVID, um, I just, I had come to the realization that you like, you know, I'm like, I'm not done. I still have, I still have a lot to give. It doesn't have to be about getting all of these big things in life. It just has to be about me continuing with my story and continuing to just give my best and be my best and, and appreciate the fact that the UFC still wants me around and the UFC still wants me to fight. So I just, I just had to kind of let the dust settle a little bit and, um, I think a lot of my motivation lately has been, I do miss Thailand a lot and I miss my Thai family and, and I miss my Thai people. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I would love to be able to go back. And so I, I keep that in mind as, as well. Yeah. Cause you did briefly retire, right? It was, it was, I, I, I'd mentioned that, the fight the, I had one more fight on my contract and I mentioned that that was going to be my last one. Okay. And I thought that, I thought that if I were to fight that out, that it would be my kind of retirement from MMA and my opening to be able to maybe pursue Muay Thai. And, um, so I wasn't going to be done fighting completely, but I just knew that like, I wanted to do some, I wanted to give something else a shot, you know, maybe I want to fight Muay Thai, but, um, yeah, uh, all of that kind of changed, and I just I figured I would just be all in in, in what I do now. Uh, you mentioned like oh, you only get fifty percent if you lose of your pay and things like that, and you know wanting to get more and 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 being seen more. Do you struggle with what you guys are compensated? This is a big uh, topic these days in in the sport. Do you do you feel like it's it's just you know the 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 the, the win show model and all that stuff? You know. I can't say that I struggle because I, I'm like, to be honest, like I'm going to be a hundred percent honest is like, I do feel 100% grateful and like blessed to be able to make the money that I make. Would I love to be able to like, would I like it to be a little bit different? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I don't think that anybody would ever turn down getting paid more. Um, but uh, I'm also not going to necessarily complain about what I get paid right now because the truth is, it's like, yeah, I am grateful. Um, do I think that there's room for us to get paid more? Yeah. Do I think that we could, uh, we could also benefit from being able to have, you know, personal like sponsors and endorsements and things like that? Yeah. I, I loved that, you know, I'd love, I, I would, I know for me, I would benefit so much if I could wear another brand on fight week or some, you know, something like that. There's, there's, there's other ways that I could make money if the structure was different. Um, and yeah, uh, but I, I can't like sit here and say like, I have a problem with it because I'm grateful for, for what I do have now. Um, but I do understand the, the stance that, that, a lot of people are taking and the, the opinions and, and, and words that other people have. I, I do understand it fully, but yeah, I'm not the guy that's like picketing, like we need more yeah. money. <laughs> but when the time comes, like I definitely will like, when the time comes, if they're like, Hey, we're going to, you know, start paying you guys more sick, man. Like, perfect. That's going to help out a lot. So yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice if we, uh, if we got paid more, especially for what we do, but, for the time being, I'm grateful. On the Saturday, like hours before the fight, do you get very anxious before your fights? And if so, 
how do you conquer that? And, and, and is that why you need maybe a little more time? Like, is it, this must take so much out of you. I mean, just seeing the emotion afterwards uh, that you're not maybe the kind of guy who wants to like jump back in in two weeks and do it all over again, or maybe not, I'm wrong. Um, so to answer the question about the like emotions before the fight, um, I used to be like an emotional wreck before my fights. I'd be in the hotel room bed, just my sheets would literally be soaked in sweat, just thinking and thinking and thinking. But um, as of late, I've completely taken a different approach. Um, on fight day, like the day of the fight, I train. Like I literally, I get up, we go run a few miles, you know, throw some medicine balls, do a full on workout, just feel good feel good about the day, embrace being alive. Um, my coach had a conversation with, with Clay Guida a while back and he was like, man, if I can't wake up and, and, and go for like a, you know, a three mile run and, and do a workout, then like, what the hell am I doing going and trying to fight? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's, I think the, the way that I've been handling it lately is um, anytime I have any type of nerves or doubts or, just like internal garbage, I just deal with it through getting active in some type of way. I think activity has been the cure to a lot of my mental mm. uh, mental garbage. Yeah. So when would you? Uh, how soon would you like to come back? Uh, I'd like to come back around like August. Okay. My goal was to fight. My goal was to fight three times this year. Is, is what I had in my mind. And um, I think I do enjoy time in between fights because I like to reflect. I like to go back and kind of, you know, read some of like my journal entries and things like that and really make sure that I give myself enough time to really grow and develop and not, and not like, burn myself out or, you know, I'm not like eager to go in there and do it again so that I, you know, I'm not in a rush to get to the top. It's kind of more of, I, w I want to embrace the journey. I want to grow. I want to bring something different in the next fight when, you know, when, when people, whoever it is that I fight next, when people watch again, I want it to be a completely different me, you know? Did, did you see uh, Connor's props and does that mean anything to you? Are you? Uh... It means the world. Okay. It means the world. Um, Conor McGregor is one of my favorite fighters, absolutely. And so to see that, uh, to see that last night, that it put a smile on my face from ear to ear, man. <laughs> you know, like that was that was so cool. Like Conor McGregor, like pretty much like giving me props and saying that I did something that wasn't like yeah boring. That's that's cool. To even know that he was watching. I mean, I know most UFC fighters watch fights, but to even see that, to know that he was tuned into the fight, yeah, I think that's that's cool. Yeah, I'm geeked. You don't see that often because go buy a whole case of proper twelve right now. <laughs> I don't even drink, but I'm just gonna keep that's like I'm gonna keep it in my in my cabinet just so every time I open it, I'm like that's gonna be my reminder of Connor's tweet. That's awesome. You could frame it as well. Yeah, man. Uh, to to do that kick to like launch that is is a tricky one, right? Because if you hit him in the head, it's illegal. You might lose the fight. Do you work on that timing? Do you work, or, or is that just something you saw in the moment and uh, you you found the opening? Uh, well, one of the things that I actually learned from Connor was precision, mm. right? He he spoke of precision multiple times, and so um, it's not something that I practice, but. I do practice like it's not like like the body kick come like circling out of a heel hook get up and then body kick is not something that I necessarily practice but I do practice precision. So um I I saw the exact spot that I wanted to kick and that's what I aimed for. Um and yeah, it landed as close to the spot as possible. That was beautiful. Perfect. Um well done. I don't want for the record, I don't want you to unblock me or any MMA media site. Uh, I just want to <laughs> say I am sorry if we were the source of any angst or frustration. I I hate to hear that. I don't want to be that. I can understand why you would want to block it out. So I'm not 
offended at all, but uh, I am trying to be better. I think we're all trying to be better. We could get better as a media core uh, and focus on the right things and, and represent things the right way and cover things the right way. So um, that's not me trying to be unblocked or get in your good graces. I just want to say I'm sorry for being that, for for being that symbol to you because that bums me out and that lets me know that like we all need to be better and start focusing on the right things. So uh, I appreciate you being honest and I appreciate you even coming on the show despite that. Because I saw all these people tagging you. I was like, is, it, am I, is something up here? I'm not sure. But um, I respect you very much for what you stand for, what you represent, and the inspiration that you are and your desire to not just get better yourself, but to make other people better. Because it could be one thing if you just wanna be better yourself, that's commendable, but to have this passion to make other people better and to change their lives really says a lot about you. So I just wanna wish you the best and say you know, much respect to you and for whatever you you know represent and whatever path you go on, you have my, my utmost respect. I appreciate it. And I want to acknowledge you for something I do. I remember like, yeah, the last time I was on your show um, and even just the, the, the small clips and things that I've seen of you, let's say like over the past year, um, I just want to acknowledge you for your growth and your maturity, you know, and, and how you've handled just all of your adversity as well. I, I feel like there's more of a, you know, there's more of like this, this maturity and calmness to who you are and then how you present yourself. Um, and it's great. I, I, I really like, I really enjoy it. This has been an incredible, enjoyable experience for me to be able to, to, to share a connection with you that way. So thanks, man. I appreciate it. Anything yeah. that I didn't ask about that you wanted to, to say once, once we're here, or do you, do you feel like we said it all? Ah, yes. Lord of the, streets, Lord of the streets, the movie. Oh yes. Um, I acted in a movie over the, um, over, like the last couple of months. Um, it's, um, Tretch from Naughty by Nature and myself will be kind of like the main characters. Wow. And then we got Anderson Silva, Hegan Machado, Chet Congo, Rampage Jackson, wow. uh, Richard Go. There's just, there's so many MMA legends in the movie. Um, crime drama. It's going to be really cool. Um, it is going to be on a, uh, on a, like a, a major streaming platform. I don't know if I can say it yet, All right. but um, yeah, it's, it's set to release uh, in just a couple of months. So wow. yeah, check, check that out. And, and you have uh, like a legit I, role in it. You're not just like a bit player fighter guy. Legit role. Wow. Well done. Start. First one, yeah. right? First movie. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was, it was really enjoyable. And uh I think it's, I think for, for people who are fans of any of us, um, I think that they're really going to enjoy the, like the effort and, and, and stuff that we put in, into making this film. It's going to be really cool. So it's definitely one for, for the MMA fans for sure. And not one and done, right? You want to do more of this acting? Yeah, ab absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there are, I, I, there's a director, um, out of Japan, who were also with the same agency um, and him and I and uh, a couple other people have been working on a script over the past nine months. Um, script is pretty much finished. Uh, we've had one pitch and uh, it's great. And that one I'll actually be play. I, I'm casted for the main role. Wow. Um, and it, it's, it's a great one. This is like a life life changing type of story. I think it's going to be really good. So we're just waiting around for that one to get picked up and, once that one goes, man, I know that one's gonna that one's gonna change the game. <laughs> wow, it's gonna change. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Much respect. Good luck with uh, you know what you're writing as well. Um, I look forward to seeing that film. That's that's quite the uh, the cast, quite the who's who. And uh, good luck with everything that you're doing. Uh, you always have a home here. If you want to get anything off your chest, say anything to the public. You have plenty of places to do so. But I really appreciate you coming on, Khalil and. Obviously, congratulations on the amazing win and, and everything that you're doing and the, the response to your, your interview. I mean, I posted one thing and it was just amazing. It had nothing to do with me, but just to see the love that you were getting is pretty amazing. So much respect, my man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right. Talk to you soon. All the best. There he is, Khalil Roundtree Jr., uh, an amazing fighter, an amazing human being. I told you he shouldn't have been the, uh, the underdog on Saturday. Carl Roberson is a great fighter as well, but... Uh, I just thought he looked tremendous in his last fight, and I thought that this was a great matchup for him. So um, 
Much love to him. 